G'day Tubers, how are we people? Hope you are all well and not suffering from the China virus. Thank you to my subscribers, thank you to my viewers and thank you to anyone else who contributes anything at all to these videos. First, a uh, bit of business and apology. I stuffed up the editing on the last, on part one of this and let my beloved Australian flag run a bit long and forgot to cut it back short, which is fine. We can't get enough of the Australian flag, but um, yeah, having said that, I did, <laughs> I buggered up the editing, but uh, shit happens. Anyway, let's get into part two of this, guys. Well, the block's all cleaned up, tubers, all the um, machining, sanding, what have you, rah, 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 has been done. Um, Cleaned up all the surfaces. It doesn't fit in the oven, so I can't powder coat this one. I'll have to wait till I can get a tin of um, engine paint, which of course I can't get until the bloody shop's open because uh, the virus has locked everything down. So yeah, that's bloody typical, but um, yeah, she's all clean and ready to go. It's just a matter of masking it off and um, painting it. Uh, cleaned up the um, air cleaner Assembly, bit of powder coat, that's a little valve cover. Just working on a few of the um, governor pieces, so on and so on and so on. Uh, some plug, that sort of shit. Um, cleaned that up, bit of black. Cleaned up some of the copper pipes. Um, yeah, slowly but surely coming along. Um, yeah, getting there nicely. Guys, this is the... Uh, Top part of the cowling or the blower housing it was pretty rusty and crappy um i've panel booted it and got it fairly straight but it's it was very pitted from the rust and powder coating won't necessarily fill it um so what i've done is i'm trying this powder coating body filler again it's high temperature and it's electrically conductive um but i think what I've learned is the trick with this stuff is to gas out the part well before you even try to powder coat it because if you put the powder on and then heat it it'll just bubble up like shit I had trouble the very first time I tried so and I might have had it a bit thick so we're gonna let this dry we'll sand it right back um, and just fill up the tiny little holes out gas it for about half a bloody hour and we'll see what happens and um, if not, she's going to be painted with the rattle can. Give the uh, uh, the pulley, uh, the pull start pulley thing, a bit of a powder coat. <laughs> Trouble is, uh, you can see in there where it missed a little bit. That's where the hook was, uh, hanging it up. And it, it creates a little, I, saw, I heard the word for it, creates a little arc around it and the powder won't actually stick. So we'll just touch that up with a can of rattle can, a rattle can of black. Didn't come up too bad, just sits on the um, sits on the bloody flywheel as you know, that's part of the um, air cleaner assembly. So yeah, just give them a quick lick as you know. That was the bolt that goes right through to the oil bath air cleaner. The nut on the top was rusted right out. I thought, this is the beauty of a lockdown I suppose, you've got plenty of time to muck about. I thought I'll stuff around and do something slightly custom. So. Yeah, well, it came up all right. I know it's not original, but yeah, well, what is? Well, that's that uh, top part of the blower housing, guys. Um, rubbed it all, rubbed all the filler back, cleaned it all up. It seemed to come up all right. A couple of little imperfections, but that's not in the powder coating. That's in my preparation not being good enough. But um, yeah, look, it looks all right. I'll, I'll, I'll give myself a pass for that. It's not perfect, but. Um, was pretty crappy to begin with. Uh, just did the bottom half of the oil bath air cleaner. Um, there we go, oil level. Um, that came up a real treat, that came up nice. So I'm hoping that uh, the top cup comes up the same and uh, yeah, we're getting there slowly. Well, tubers, that's all a bit cleaned up. Uh, I'm waiting on some tins of paint because I can't get out because of the lockdown. Um, I was going to powder coat this, but of course it won't fit in my oven, so that's going to be painted uh, with a rattle can, same as the petrol tank uh, and the air cleaner top. The rest of it's all cleaned up, um, ready to reassemble, waiting for the gaskets, 
from the states. The block's all ready to go. It's uh, that'll be. It won't fit in the oven either, so that's going to be spray painted just with a tin engine black. Um, she's all done. She's all cleaned up. I'll decide on those nuts and bolts as I'm reassembling what I'll do with them. But uh, that's about that. There, oh, there, those tank straps. Um, Stainless steel with a bit of brass in that in them. They came up all right with a bit of a polish, so she should look all right with a bit of luck. Well, guys, I normally wouldn't start assembly until everything's painted and cleaned. I'm waiting around for tins of black paint. I'm waiting for tins of primer filler, and I'm waiting for the gaskets from America. I've done all I can do. I'm going to start a little bit of assembly, put the valves in, maybe the cam, just some little bits and pieces, and... Um, yeah, I can't do much more. I can't put the crank in because I've got no um, gaskets to put behind the bearing retainer things there. So, um, yeah, we'll just do a couple of little bits and pieces and make a start. Well, that's the valves in, guys. Um, that's a pretty straightforward operation as such. Um, obviously, don't mix them up. Your exhaust and your intakes, sometimes they're the same size. Uh, these were clearly marked, so not a huge problem. One thing I can see is there's still a little bit of yellow paint on this block, so uh, we'll have to touch it up a bit more. Just about to bung the cam in, guys. Um, the followers are in. That's them, as you know. Uh, plenty of pre-lube, uh, engine lube on them. You know, the one, this stuff here, whatever it is. Yeah, that stuff. Um, shaft comes in from this side. Which I think is the flywheel side. Um, yeah, just plenty of lube. Um, start your shaft and then put your camshaft in place and just tap it through nice and careful. Well, the cam's in, guys. Um, put your lobes opposite your um, uh, lifters or whatever and uh, time to check the clearance. I don't even know what it has to be. I'll have to go to the book, but. Um, yeah, we'll see with what sort of clearances we've got. Well, guys, I got a about an 11 on the exhaust and a 6 on the intake. I don't know what they should be, but I'll tell you what, I'm going with that. Well, like most repair manuals usually say, guys, um, uh, assemble in reverse order of disassembly. Well, that's fine. I went and put the cam in. Uh, if you do that, unfortunately, you can't get that back part of the governor in. So I had to pull the cam back out um, and sit the, uh, the governor assembly back in. But that's no big deal. And, um, yeah, it's all free enough and working all right. So, um, yeah, I think we can, uh, I think we can continue. Well, tubers, it's taken, <laughs> I don't know, near on a month. Um, I finally got my gasket kit and my carby kit. It's a really comprehensive carby kit. There's new jets, the new emulsion tube, everything in it. Um, yeah, so quite a comprehensive kit. It's really good and um, engine gasket kit and seals appear to be correct. So that's great. Now, I ordered that from Antique Briggs. I think his name's Fred. Um, fantastic bloke and all of that. That's from, uh, in America. Uh, it got from America to here in, to Australia in about a week. And it took about three weeks to get from Sydney to Melbourne. And that's only 800 kilometres. And it takes about an hour by air. So you tell me. I, mean, <laughs> I love Australia. But, um, yeah, Jesus, I know, I know it's all due to the lockdown, of course. Um, but, yeah, so anyway, the parts got here quicker from America than what they did got to Melbourne, if that makes any sense. Um... So yeah, so we're going to pull the carby down and um, put all the kit through it. I wasn't expecting, as I say, quite such a comprehensive kit. It's, as I say, new emulsion tube, absolutely everything in it. Tiny little parts there. I don't even know what that's for, but we'll find out. So yeah, let's uh, pull the carby down again, guys. Yeah, well, there's the kit, guys. Um, float bowl gaskets, two of. Um, don't know why there's two, but I'll use both of them. A yeah, new um, needle and seat assembly. When that looks like, where are we? Focus, if I can, a little retaining spring. Idle jet. Uh, another needle and seat, look at that. 
two of them. That's strange. Don't know which one to use. A new pin, new main jet adjustment, and that little seal there. I don't know. That may be the seat for that um, little steel uh, needle. Maybe. I don't know for sure. Um, and a new emulsion tube. So, yeah, let's tear it a bit and see what happens. Well, that's a new needle and seat in, guys. Um, I know that's practically impossible to see. Um, is that any better? About the same. Um, I think to set the float level, uh, the float has to be sort of fairly level to the base. Uh, so if you look at that gap between the float and the actual body of the carby, it's fairly level. It's probably just a little bit high on the right hand side. That will mean it's just slightly leaner. Uh, it's, I'd, I'd prefer to be slightly lean than slightly rich. So we'll see how we go with that. And here we have mixed bloopers. <laughs> Take two. This time we put the needle and seat and the float and all that in, but this time we put the gaskets in. Um, you can't bloody well do it the other way around. Well, you can't get much quicker and easier than that, guys. Um, yeah, very simple. Hopefully it works. I'll shut my mouth until I know that. That's your idle mixture. Um, screw it until it stops. Don't. You don't have to wind on it. You will just ruin the seat. So the moment it stops. Wind it back one and a half turns, approximately. That'll get you started. From there, when the motor's warmed up, you can tune it properly. Same thing with the main jet. Um, screw it in until it stops. Don't force it. Go back out a turn and a half. And as I say, once she's running and warmed up, tune it properly from there. No good tuning a cold engine. Well, tubers, um, yeah, real comprehensive uh, engine gasket kit as well. That's the um, gasket for the bottom of the air cleaner there. I went to great pains to cut one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so we've got a new one of them. Couple of um, gaskets there for this end housing. Now I'm tipping there's a few there. That way you can set your end float on the crank. It's a rubber ring. I'm not sure what that's out of. Um, yeah, head gasket, uh, intake manifold, valve cover, so on and so on, uh, crankshaft seals, points, housing thing seal, uh, gasket, yeah, should be all good. Well tubers, these things happen from time to time, um, they're the two new seals that I got supplied, and that's the original one, so one of those seals will be fine in there. And that's the original one out of there. Um, as you can see, that just ain't gonna work. So, um, I've cleaned up this seal. I didn't damage it when I removed it. I've cleaned it up as best I can. It is a bit old. Um, because this thing's not going back to full time, day in, day out work, it's just a little hobby engine. I'm gonna take a chance with it. Um, it's easy enough to change if it does leak. Um, so yeah, we'll go with it and uh, see what happens. Well, that's those uh, housings on guys. A um, little bit of sealer on them. I don't like to use much because it oozes out when you bloody will pull them up and it looks like crap. Got to wipe that one off. Um, just make it look nice, you know. Just drop the piston in guys. Um, a ring compressor makes life so easy. There is other ways of doing it, but um, these are the quickest and easiest, safest way. Um, heaps of oil, plenty of pre-lube on the bottom of the conrod. That's the other half, of course. Um, stagger your rings about 120 degrees. That means the gap or ring gap, um, because there's three of them, or two compression and the oil controls. Make them about, uh, the gap's about 120 degrees apart. Don't put them all in line because um, it'll only aid oil coming up and a bit of loss of compression and so on and so on. Um, that's my little dot. You remember on disassembly I pointed it towards the valves. Um, we'll tap the piston down into the crank and put the cap on. 
pistons in and tight guys. Uh, the tabs have been knocked over as you can see. Don't forget to put the oil slinger on and put it on the correct way. Um, yeah, that's basically the internal components done. Well, that's the points assembly in tubers. Um, I've got to set the gap yet, but you can see... Oh, shit, hang on. You can see there open and closing. I don't know what the gap is. I'll have to get the specifications, but it seems to be working. They work off that funny... You can't really see it. Um, let me see if I can get a bit of light in there. Nah. Off that bloody little cam assembly there, and um, as the camshaft comes around, it uh, opens and closes the points. So, yeah, we'll set the gap, and hopefully it's all right. Well, points are in and set to 20 thou. Should be all right. Um, put the sump on. Uh, what we'll do now is um, put that bloody coil assembly and all that on and start thinking about ignition timing. Well, that's the coil and the rotor and all that in place, guys. Um, just got to time it now. Flywheel's back on, guys, and uh, we have a spark. I wouldn't call it a massive, thick blue spark, but it is a spark nonetheless. So we'll see how we go. Carby went on all right, tubers. Um, probably just have to adjust little things like that fuel uh, inlet. Governor's all hooked up. Um, whether it's right or not remains to be seen, but it's all hooked up. Um, yeah. yeah, it seems to be okay. Well, tank's on, fuel line's on, cylinder head's on, carby plugs in. I just found out the thread in the cylinder head is bloody pulled out. I've got it biting on about one thread. So hopefully it'll hold to get it going. Um, but I'll have to put a heli coil or something in the cylinder head. Um, as I say, someone's been butchering the poor old soul over the years. Um, but yeah, we should be... All right, it's got a spark, so we'll see how we go. Well, there it is, tubers. Uh, the Briggsy's back together. Um, didn't come up too bad. I'm not 100% happy with the paint. Um, but it looks all right. I mean, it looks, geez, it looks a hell of a lot better than what it did. Um, as I say, I found out a lot doing this motor. Um, as you remember, the uh, manifold was busted and it had been bronzed up. Um, Obviously, the cylinder head there has been cracked. This has all been replaced the whole lot, which makes me come to think that um, maybe it was damaged somehow, you know, like a machine ran into it or it fell off the back of a truck or <laughs> some bloody thing, because just because of the fact that all this has been changed, that breather is not original, as we know. Um, I fixed it up as best I could. I haven't put any oil in the oil bath yet, because um, I'll probably have to take that off. I may have to give it a bit of, bit of ether or something to get it to fire. I've got sparkle, but it's not massively strong. Uh, there's no oil or petrol in it yet. I'll um, do that tomorrow when we attempt to first start. But uh, yeah, it was, I was say, I'm always certain it was a, a, a Vic Rail engine. And uh, with a bit of luck, it will be again. Ah, uh, the old Briggsy, eh? A couple of issues, guys. Um, this bloody fuel tap leaking like a sieve. I'll have to replace it, do something. It's no good. So I've had to bloody jerry-rig a bit of fuel line. Um, the, uh, I thought I had it super tight. Bloody flywheel nut undid. And I don't know how, because it's got that lock on it. And um, promptly flywheel come loose and, uh, yeah, it stopped going. But it was, it was actually started like second pull and um, yeah I just started to tune the carby a bit and then the nut come off so yeah I've got to come up with something there. Well tubers what I've come up with um, I don't even know if it's gonna work um, 
one of the bolts that bolts on the um, pull start pulley. Um, I've cut a piece of aluminium and lined it up with the nut and the um, that radius. Hopefully, if the nut tries to turn, that'll all lock up. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll work. Well, we'll find out. We're about to give her another run. Well, tubers, that's that one done. Um, yeah, it didn't come up too bad. Couple of little things to fix up, but uh, yeah, she'll be right. Just, yeah, goes okay. Um, thank you to my subscribers, my viewers, and anyone else who contributes anything at all to these. Just remember, it's not how right or how wrong or how good or how bad the finished product is, whatever that is. It's how much fun you have doing it. Stay safe, people. Keep away from the China virus, and I shall talk to you guys real soon.